My name is Sharon Salzberg and I'm a meditation instructor. I've had the great privilege of being here um, for this weekend with my friend Sylvia Borstein and we are working with what she, she called the whole of the path. It's a sense of a path of self-transformation and ultimately its effect on the world which involves mindfulness, loving kindness, meditation, um, discourse, discussion, yoga, things like that. So it's a lot of fun. I often describe meditation practice in general as a kind of skills training. People often have this kind of funny reaction like, what do you mean loving kindness or compassion is a skill? But I think of it as a skill of awareness or attention so that if our attention is locked into maybe thinking about ourselves only in the negative, for example, or um, dividing the world into these little packets and ignoring a, a lot of beings, a lot of people, a lot of creatures, thinking of them as having nothing to do with us, then the process of deepening loving kindness is really a process of changing our awareness, changing our attention so that it's more flexible, it's more inclusive, we notice others more, we notice positive things about ourselves, not just negative things and so on. So the meditation practice is the training in helping our awareness be more flexible and, and more open. Everything is part of the retreat. Uh, eating a meal, taking a walk, uh, walking by somebody else, something like that is also a very valuable experience, just like sitting in the meditation hall might be or, or doing a formal walking. And so everything is designed to be as supportive as possible of one's own process. It's, it's such a sense of uh, ease here and people feel very well taken care of, which is very important because to look within and to adopt the discipline and to work with everything that comes up is not that easy and, and you really want to be in a beautiful environment. You want to be um, in a place where you feel nurtured and helped and, and supported. Uh, silence in particular is one of those things that almost everybody in the beginning for their first retreat thinks, ooh, I don't know about that for me and people come and say things like, I don't know if I can be silent for three days, or my partner says I'll never be able to be silent for three days, or uh, one person actually came to one retreat I was teaching and said they're doing a bedding pool in my office because they don't think I can be silent for three days. But almost always when people look back on their experience, it, they talk about it as one of the most beautiful aspects of being together because it's like for once in our lives we can be a little quiet and we don't have to impress somebody or dismay them or <laughs> amuse them or anything. We can really turn to our own experience and, and look within, and it's quite remarkable. Um, well, here at the Garrison Institute, uh, one of the things that has been really special for me, apart from retreats like this, which are just open retreats, is, is working with specific populations like the domestic violence shelter workers and then the supervisors and directors um, from that world of domestic violence. And uh, it's been really tremendous both to see their community and to, I just have so much respect for the work that they do and, and to see where our worlds can come together. I think when I've, I've worked with people who define themselves as caregiving uh, people, um, Sometimes what's missing is a kind of balance where everyone, no matter how hard their role is, um, has said to me they feel privileged to be able to be in that role. But they often are precisely the kind of person I was talking about earlier where if somebody said to them, oh, if you do this thing for 20 minutes, it'll really help your friend, they'll do it, but if you say it'll really help you, it's like, I don't know about that, that might be a little selfish or, or self-absorbed, and, and yet we can't go on forever without paying attention to that need for resiliency and, um, <clears throat> and, and some kind of inner resource that will help us go on in a beautiful way, not in a you know, burdened and, and terrible way. And so um, we have to pay attention to that kind of replenishing. And, um, it's, it moves me so much to be with people like that because they are so giving and, and so extraordinary in those ways and um, it, it makes me happy to think about them doing that more and more for themselves as well.
One of the people I'm teaching with in January is this friend, Sherry Maples, who was a police officer for 20 years and uh, is a student of the um, Vietnamese teacher Thich Nhat Hanh, now teaches in his tradition. And um, she works a lot with vicarious trauma and um, the kinds of traumatic experience first responders often have, where you're dealing with traumatized people and you just absorb it. And it ranges from stress to burnout to really a kind of personal traumatization. And so um, she's very skilled and I'm very excited about working with her. And then Gina Sharp, um, who's another friend who uh, has a lot of experience of people of color. She is a person of color and, and um, really relanguaging these teachings in a way that's immensely accessible to to all kinds of people and uh, I'm sure we'll have a lot of fun together and that um, it's a way, again, it's like having, um, being on the cutting edge of, of both learning and listening ourselves and, and being able to offer these skills in a way that I think is very accessible, they're very accessible, very real um, and useful for people in, in their work and in their lives.